The term New England Island Hotspot may spark images of Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket, but on the North Shore it's all about the 11-mile stretch of beaches, marshes, and welcoming sand of Plum Island. While the food and fishing may be luring new faces to the area, retired Coast Guard Rear Admiral Dan May says the region has been a hot spot since the 1700s. We're sitting right at the mouth of the Merrimack River. There were no jetties here at the time. There were shifting sands. Newburyport was flourishing, a lot of ships coming in and out. That ship traffic would require aids to navigation, including Plum Island Lighthouse, perched at the northern tip of the island. This was built in 1898, so it'll celebrate 125 years this year. In this milestone year, a tour of the grounds begins with some history. This is a copy, but we have the original document signed by George Washington of the very first keeper, Abner Lowell. Best of all, if you're taller than 42 inches, you can climb to the top of the lighthouse, go out on the catwalk, and you'll have a spectacular view of the entrance to the Merrimack River and the Atlantic Ocean. The lighthouse is still active, one of more than 150 scattered on the coast from Massachusetts to Maine. Many more than the Coast Guard could maintain, if not for a movement to transfer stewardship of these structures to local governments and dedicated organizations such as the Friends of Plum Island Light. Of course, the Coast Guard will still come and maintain the light, but everything else is up to the Friends to do, and they've done a marvelous job in maintaining, as you can see here today. <laughs> From Plum Island Light, we traveled down island for spectacular views of the original light at Sunset Club. We called it Sunset Club because the, the sun in the summertime sits right there and it's just absolutely stunning. Co-owner Bo Sturm is no stranger to the hospitality industry with several restaurants including one in neighboring Newburyport. But on Plum Island, he felt something special. It's not as well known as a lot of the other beaches, but it's magical here. Local residents have long appreciated the beauty of this location, even when it was the site of a service station and a friend's private residence. Two people pull up in front of his house, get out literally on his property in front of his house, put lawn chairs out, grab a bottle of wine, and start watching the sunset. A light bulb went off, the service station was converted into a bar, and the space was renovated to elevate that moment they had witnessed. That was one of the first things that we really wanted to do, is be able to have people sit by the fire and watch the sunset. That was kind of a fundamental thing to us, and um, it really worked out great. In the kitchen, the theme is beach food but not the kind you might expect. Beach food from all over the world. We've got our Baja burger, which is topped with tomatillo salsa, nacho chips, jalapenos. It's insane. On the beverage side, they take a similar approach with elaborate house specials. It's called Miss Shipwreck, and it is a raspberry rhubarb Aperol spritz. Really light and refreshing tasty. We have bocce, we have cornhole. The kids can kind of play. I think this is kind of a perfect spot. From sunsets to sea breeze, we take to the water with Captain Chris Velasquez of Madeline Charters. What's really great about Plum Island is it's just so consistent throughout the summer. You know, we have a whole summer basically from the first week of May all the way through October when it comes to striped bass. Prefer bluefish, shark, or giant tuna? It's all here, which is why he's hosted people from all 50 states. Well, almost all. Anybody here from uh, South Dakota is watching. I think that's one out of like three I need left. Most of the people are fairly local. Now, you're a school teacher during the day. What is it that you love about this, about being out here? Well, I just love being outside, being outdoors, growing up on the water and just seeing how nature interacts with itself. It's really cool when you get to see it every day. <laughs> We pick a spot to cast our lines and quickly discover a most unusual fact for a charter captain. You love the fish. Yeah. You make a living fishing, but you don't eat fish? Don't eat them. Don't eat them. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm cooking them wrong, but I, I can't get into it. <laughs> really? Fortunately, catching fish for himself is not what puts him on the water every day. Love taking kids. 
You know, putting kids on good fish and giving them a fun day. There's nothing like that. That's the best. <laughs> And back to the Plum House, Plum Island Lighthouse. Several of the friends of the lighthouse are actually direct descendants of light keepers from the days when you actually needed full time light keepers. keepers. Yeah. Right, keepers of the light. Today, of course, everything is all automated. Um, they do, however, at Plum Island maintain the 1897 era Fresnel lens that is in the lighthouse. That is something you can see on tour, which is available by appointment. Beautiful spot. So pretty. We'll have more from Plum Island a little later in the show, but first a city view from above.